And we're now joined by Kwame Owino, the CEO of the Institute of Economic Affairs, to help us analyze how, just how Kenya can manage its finances. Thank you very much for joining us, Kwame. Okay. Uh, first of all, just coming off that story uh, done by Alex Chamada, quite radical moves there by the Rwandese government. Can the same be implemented here? Yeah, certainly. Um, I think uh, one of the things we need to understand is that the wage problem is... I mean, what we consider the wage problem in Kenya reflects general public finance management position, mm -hmm. which is not too good. There are too many leakages, and of course, there are too many flexibilities that allow people to get all manner of alliances in here. Mm -hmm. And so what uh, the Rwandese government seems to do is a very prudent thing, which is basically to collapse to the extent that is possible, all pay into a single package. I think the amount is also quite... Com uh, I mean, obviously compares uh, with us and it's laughable. So that's the first thing. The second thing is actually to shift the incentive so that a public sector worker has the incentive to preserve their own car and to use those resources efficiently. Mm -hmm. If they know that there's a fuel bill that is, a I mean, the fuel bill does not fall on his pocket, then they don't care. I mean, they fuel it to go for all manner of simple things, including their personal shopping. So definitely, it's about how you shift those incentives, and it definitely can work. It will require some change. Obviously, there'll be people who will say, well, it can't work. What works in Rwanda doesn't work here. Uh, but I think it's, 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 it's possible, okay. and it's been proven. Yeah. Let's, let's come back home. And we've seen the government finally accepting um, you know, that the wage bill is a lot higher than it should be. They've been pretty loud about it lately. But really, how do we define austerity? Well, uh, it's one side of government, uh, which is the executive. Let's remember, legislature and the judiciary are also government, and the legislature has not come out with a single consolidated voice. But nevertheless, I think, yes, uh, the executive spends the most. Uh, I think austerity uh, is basically about, look, when uh, there's a shock or when you, there's a shock, you live entirely upon your means. I mean, no borrowing or limit borrowing to as much as is possible and try mm -hmm. and balance your books. Uh, it would be just like uh, having a household budget where you live entirely on what you earn at the, at the, at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it, it shows. Let's okay. live within our means. All right. Uh, common consensus and of course the debate now is around the 20% cut. Yes. And you know, we're still asking, is this symbolic? Will it have any substantial impact towards uh, actually cutting on costs? What's your take on that? Is it, is this symbolic move really substantive? Well, it's, I think it's very brave, to be honest, because yes, you've shown us what, what the Rwandi's case is, uh, but there's no president that we've, and we tried to search, perhaps there is that is kept us, but there's no president on this continent that has ever publicly declared that I'll take a wage cut. So that's, I mean, that's a very, very loud symbol, mm -hmm. and I think it draws out there. Uh, on its own, though, it is not enough. And secondly, because I mean, as the president made it very, very clear, I think the uh, PR team should make this very clear. It's not being forced on anybody else. So nobody's saying teachers must take this and everybody else. You've said PR, and now I'm worried that this could just be a PR move. Uh, not so. I think the, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, which also deserves credit for actually bringing this thing to the fore, is doing a good job. They'll be going out to the counties and out there to actually make Kenyans understand what it is. So it wasn't just a one-day show has happened. Mm -hmm. um, and when they provide those proposals out there, uh, I think what would be required of the executive is just to give them political cover because it will be resisted, mm -hmm. both, from within, from, both from within the executive and also from other arms of government. Mm -hmm. What options do they have, though, um, outside of pay cuts? What else can the government do to manage its finances? I mean, one of them is just to consolidate wages. That's the first one. The second one is, yes, there's no reason why the government of Kenya should have the biggest, uh, with the exception of car dealers, the biggest uh, garages, I mean, the <laughs> largest consumer and all that. So those are things that can be done uh, very, very well. And the president who was, a couple of years back, the minister for finance had actually instituted the rule that, look, we will only buy 1,800 cc vehicles. The rule doesn't work anymore. It looks like I think the ball was lost, and obviously you see very, very sporty cars driven by, mm -hmm. uh, by public sector workers. So mm -hmm. I think that that's one thing that can, can be enforced. Mm. Yeah. Uh, finally, Kwame, there was a proposal during the national debate, when, when it opened at least on Monday, where somebody said, why couldn't the government just do a percent a year? And look uh, and spread it across different sectors mm -hmm. and they said maybe that would be a way in which the government both the executive legislature and all the other arms of government would actually be more warm towards do you think that would be a way out uh, okay instead of a more radical 20 percent cut well you know 20 percent cut is a present symbolic gesture yeah. So I don't think there's anything exactly wrong with it. Though, of course, he needs legal covering to actually make it stand and to, be, to sustain it over time. So that's one. Uh, but the thing is, yes, I think the good thing is that the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, together with the, the, pres I mean, the executive branch of government, have actually sounded this horn early. There's not a crisis yet, to be honest. But you have a problem when, you, when the, the growth rates 
in wages is much, much higher than what our, our, our growth rates in revenue and growth rates in, in GDP are. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have, we have some time. And yes, we actually think we should set targets because partly the Constitution and the Public Finance Management Law provides some kind of guidance about the 70% should be spent on, and at least 30% should be spent on development. Mm -hmm. So obviously they can set a, a medium term goal and try to reach it over time. Definitely, right. it will not be a radical thing. Okay, yep. thank you so much Kwame. Uh, Kwame Aweno, the CEO of Institute of Economic Affairs, giving us an in-depth in analysis on how the government can manage its economic affairs.